This is Flashpoint. If you're unfamiliar, it's a TV show on Kenneth Copeland's Victory Network. It's a uh, far-right extremist nutcase TV show owned and operated by Kenneth Copeland. I think the host today, the host is usually Gene Bailey, but I think the host today is the guy in the middle, Lance Walna. I'm not super sure. Dude on the right is um, called Lloyd Brown. Complete nutcase, dude. Oh my God. Some of the stuff I have Lloyd Brown saying. It is, no, I'm sorry. It's Floyd Brown. It's Floyd Brown. By the way, while we listen to these people say they're absolutely insane stuff, we're going to play some Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I'm just playing a mini game, so it shouldn't, there are no spoilers or anything. If there are any spoilers that take place, you know, during Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I'll remove them, I'll blur them, whatever. Let me just pay, or let me just play like a couple of clips from Floyd Brown and listen to the Nutter Buttery unfold. This one is from late March 2023. How do we take back America? We do it by you taking back your street. We do it by you occupying your neighborhood. We do it by your local church taking over your town. I love Jack Hibbs. He's done it in uh, Chino Valley, California. He's done it. Or Chino Hills. Chino Hills. He's done it. His church runs town. And every church should run their town. Every single one of them. That is part of what's called Seven Mountains Dominionism. The Seven Mountains Mandate. And the Seven Mountains Mandate goes like this. We need, as Christian nutcases, we need to take over parts of, parts of society. Primarily, seven parts of society. We need to take over government, economy, military, business, so on and so forth. It, it just it, it keeps going. They have to take over these seven areas of society in God's name. If they can do that, then they will have accomplished blah, 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 whatever. So this guy's plan was to take over parts of society in the name of Jesus. Now, one of the fundamental like uh, requirements, if you will, to seven mount to the seven mountains mandate is that you militarize your church. You turn it into something that, uh, you know, you could give the parishioners guns, you know, AR-15s or whatever, and the pastor would lead as commander of the church. He would lead as commander of this militia. Now, the individual militias would be given the opportunity to uh, join forces with each other and form a full-blown army and the whole nine yards. They're creating a militia. You know, these people talk about the southern border and militias and blah, blah, blah. It's nonsense. This isn't happening at the southern border. They are actually creating militias right now. Like, they are really creating militias out of their churches. And they're doing it out of a pseudo-historical understanding of the, um, of the founding fathers and how they operated and the whole nine yards. Anyway, that's the idea that's being espoused by, what's his name again? I'm just making sure I get it right. Floyd Brown. Not Lloyd. It's Floyd Brown. These are these idea, or these are the ideas uh, um, espoused by Floyd Brown, but he's not intelligent enough to come up with it on his own. He actually got it from the guy in the middle here, Lance Walna, who is a self-proclaimed, self-affirmed Christian nationalist. And as a Christian nationalist, he got the idea from an old anti-Semitic book called The Protocols of the Elders of Zion. It was referenced in Hitler's books. Um, I think Mein Kampf referenced the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, blamed the Jews for everything, of course, as Hitler tended to do. 
And the Protocols of the Elders of Zion was actually written in Tsarist Russia in 1902. Russia was blaming all of its problems on the Jews at the time. Funny enough, Tsarist Russia actually got the idea to take over these seven areas of society from an old satire book, an old French satire book written in, the, in 1854. 80% of the Protocols of the Elders of Zion was plagiarized from this old satire book, this French satire book from 1854. I have this whole thing about, like, I've done this whole video about it. It's like 16 minutes long. I don't feel like getting into it right now. But the point is that these people have been full of shit since the beginning, and they are literally attempting to implement the strategy of world domination that they claimed that the quote-unquote Jews are trying to implement to take over society. No joke. Floyd Brown is a Seven Mountains Dominionist. He's a Dominionist who accepts or who ascribes to, I guess, the Seven Mountains mandate. Feels good. They may not even realize how anti-Semitic this is. I'm hard-pressed to believe that the guy in the middle, Lance Wilna, doesn't know how anti-Semitic this is. Doesn't know the source of the Seven Mountains mandate. Hello, I'm John Grace filling in for Gene Bailey. Welcome to Flashpoint. Uh, make sure to share this on your social media. GoVictory.com. For yeah, because they're so persecuted. Every time they get to this point. Oh my God, dude, I died so early on in this. Every time they get to this point, they talk about how persecuted they are. Let's see if he talks about it. Forward slash Flashpoint and Rumble Up, Rumble, not Rumble Up, but just Rumble.com forward slash Flashpoint. And we're going to talk about suppressing free speech. So make sure that you sign up. How did I know? Suppressing free speech. That's all they ever talk about. Their free speech is being suppressed. These people with millions of listeners who have millions of people that show up to their conferences and their stupid little um, events and all that other junk. Their free speech is being suppressed. Totally. And who's doing it exactly? Guess we'll never know, will we? You know, every time they talk about their free speech being suppressed and how mistreated they are, I always have to point out this video. This is a Flashpoint conference that was held. Flashpoint holds, like, um, physical uh, events around the country. And uh, this is uh, Gene Bailey at one of his Flashpoint events. In fact, this is from two years ago. Two years ago, okay? Now imagine how big they are at this point, two years later. We invited President Donald J. Trump to come join us tonight. He couldn't do that. But I guarantee you he's going to see this video if he's not watching live. So, Dale, if you're taking a camera shot, I want you to tell President Trump what you think of him right now. This is how suppressed the free speech of these people is. This is how suppressed they are. Oh, so suppressed. Wow, these people are so mistreated. So the point is, these people are not suppressed. They were never suppressed. They were always full of shit. Now, we've got. Go ahead. Tell me about how oppressed you are and how suppressed your free speech is. Go on. Rumble up, rumbled, not rumble up, but just rumble.com forward slash flashpoint. 
or rumble up. That's an option. And we're going to talk about suppressing free speech. So make sure that you sign up. We've got two mm. great guests tonight, Lance Wallnow and Floyd Brown. Welcome to the program, gentlemen. Dude, I should have healed. I, I'm just really bad at this. I, I'm not even really like a super big fan of this mini game. I have uh, two other mini games to hit in this game, so I might hit the other two mini games. We'll see. We just give this a shot one more time. See how it goes. I'm getting better at it. Maybe I need a little bit of space away from it. Great to be with you. How's, good. how's that chair feel? The chair feels good. The chair. Dude, his audio is just is bad. It sounds like he has a bad cable. If he's connected to an XLR mic, like I, I can't tell if he's using XLR or lav mic or what, but he needs a new cable or the connection's bad or something. I don't know. I don't know. Something's wrong with this cable and he needs to fix it immediately. It feels good. We miss Gene, but it's good to see Lance without a tie on. That's what I'm most excited about today. Yes. <laughs> it's my Christopher Hitchens look. I'm trying to add a. Oh my God. Christopher Hitchens is famous for being an atheist. I'm sure you guys probably knew that just in case. It's his Christopher Hitchens look, huh? Okay. Excited about today. Yes. <laughs> it's my Christopher Hitchens look. I'm trying to add a new uh, dimension to the Flashpoint look. There you go. Thank you. We need all the help we can get. So we're going to start off tonight. Right. And Christopher Hitchens is the look that you want. Okay. With the Supreme Court uh, opinion that was heard today on free speech and get you guys to comment on this. Watch this. Clip. Hello, I'm Senator Eric Schmidt. When I was Missouri's attorney general, I filed the seminal lawsuit Missouri versus Biden, which is now called Murphy versus Missouri. It's going to be heard in the United States Supreme Court on Monday, and it's the biggest free speech case in American history. I don't think I've heard of this. God, I wish my wife was here and she could Add a little context to this. She's probably following this pretty closely. That's a shame. Pitting the government against the people. At the core of the lawsuit is the idea that the federal government can't outsource censorship to social media companies to trample on American speech, which is exactly what they were doing. At the behest of some of the highest ranking government officials in the country, the biggest social media companies in the world censored speech on topics like the lab leak theory, the Hunter Biden laptop story, Okay, now let me just talk about a little bit of this for a second. He's completely full of shit. I'm sure I don't even need to point that out. But let let me just address it. Let's uh, let's honestly address what he's saying, okay? Social media suppressed disinformation. You know what? Let me lay this out for you, okay? Hypothetically speaking, let's say the lab leak theory shouldn't be even it shouldn't even be called a theory. Hypothetically speaking, let's say the lab leak hypothesis, hypothesis was real. Four years ago or three or whenever it was that, uh, you know, the lab leak hypothesis started, there was no reason for anybody to believe that the lab leak hypothesis was real. It was simply conspiracy theorists putting something forward as a possible explanation of, I don't know, they're, they're blaming China, basically. Additionally, with the lag, with the lag leak, oh my God, I'm going to get this sentence out. Additionally, with the lab leak hypothesis comes this underlying implication, if you will, that China did it on purpose, that they were intentionally leaking um, COVID to the rest of the world to hurt the rest of the world, to hurt people. That was their plan. They wanted to hurt people. There's very obviously no reason to believe that. Like none of it. Okay, sure. Maybe it did leak from a lab. I suppose it's possible that maybe that took place. There's no evidence to support that as of this moment. Um, you know what? Maybe there is at this moment. I don't know. I don't know. But you know what? There definitely isn't evidence to support the idea that China intentionally leaked it from a lab with the intent to harm other people. 
there certainly is an evidence to support the idea that Fauci intentionally leaked it from a lab to take advantage of people or whatever other claims they make about Fauci. He wanted to test his new creation on a population of people or some other nonsense like that. Like, none of that is true, obviously. And it's all baked right into this quote-unquote lab leak theory. That's what these conspiracy theorists believe. That's the supposition that they have put forward. So whether the lab leak theory is true, whether it did leak from a lab or not, that is COVID, whether COVID leaked from a lab or not, is irrelevant. Everything following that is nonsense. Did it leak from a lab? Maybe. If the answer is yes, we should put a lot of time and effort into making sure that, you know, these labs, which, by the way, are necessary, we need these labs to make sure that, you know, we have vaccines for the next generation of illnesses that are inevitably going to come. Um, we need to make sure that the um, protections we have in place in these labs to prevent them from, like, leaking any prob like any uh, illnesses or any diseases or whatever, we need to make sure that those protections are a lot more stringent. We have to be a lot more careful with all of this stuff. That's the point. There's like no nefarious nature behind any of this garbage. And these people built into it insist that there must be. It makes sense to them, right? Intuitively, it makes sense. Now, it took me, what, three, four, five minutes to explain all of that, something that you guys probably already knew, to articulate it. And it took him literally five seconds to espouse This is why this is such a problem. This is the exact reason why social media companies started banning any talk of the lab leak conspiracy. Because, hey, maybe it's true. Maybe so. There was no nefarious nature behind it where these people were taking advantage of others and they were trying to... Like, it's all made up garbage. Maybe it leaked from a lab, but literally everything else in the equation from top to bottom is all, like, fabricated nonsense. Okay. Let's step back, listen to this poor, sorry son of a bitch tell us all about how he was, you know, how social media mistreated everybody. Oh, my God. There were pre-built assumptions in all of this stuff. And those pre-built assumptions were false. Some of the highest ranking government officials in the country, the biggest social media companies in the world censored speech on topics like the lab leak theory, the Hunter Biden laptop story, the origins of COVID, the efficacy of masks, and much, much more. Like everything that he listed has built in baggage. All the words he used have built in baggage. It's all nonsense. It's just sad. And by the way, they're private companies. You want to limit what individuals are allowed to do with their private companies? No? Really? Um, okay. You're going down a dangerous road that you're not going to like, though. The discovery that came out in that case is shocking, to say the least. It shows... What? Discovery in what? Like, what are you even talking about? More. The discovery that came out in that case is shocking, to say the least. It shows it wasn't just one or two officials that were working to, with social media companies to censor American voices. Dude, is this guy talking about the Twitter files right now? Really? No, there's nothing, quote-unquote, shocking, to say the least, about any of this. It's just complete, made-up nonsense. Are you serious? 
it was a leviathan of officials and agencies, more appropriately dubbed a vast censorship enterprise. This case cuts at the very core of what it means to be an American and what we believe in this country. The federal government should not be censoring American speech, and they don't get to end run around the Constitution by having social media platforms do it for them. Wow, dude, I just died. I died to Tom Berries. This is actually a really difficult battle. But okay, let's l let's try again. And that was on easy mode too. Oh my God, that was easy mode. All right, let me outfit some people to do things a little bit differently. Even this country, the federal government should not be censoring American speech. And they don't get to end run around the constitution by having social media platforms do it for them. All right, look, I'm sure I've said this before. I'm going to say it one more time. Here's the thing. When the founding fathers came to the United States, they came from a time and place that was really difficult for them to live in. As in, the Church of England, for example, controlled the government. They were one. England had a single united state church, the Church of England. If you criticize the Church of England, then you were jailed for it, you were persecuted for it, you were whatever. I mean, prosecuted for it. Absolutely unacceptable. That is what the Founding Fathers were trying to prevent. Right there. That. Now, this guy is equating criticism of the the government or the church or whatever with people not liking what he said that's what he's doing here yeah guess what people don't like what you say then they're gonna think you're a scumbag is this your first time really if you say the n-word in front of a black person people aren't gonna like you that black person's not going to like you. Oh, I'm being persecuted because this black person doesn't like me because I called him the N-word. If you don't want people to think you're a scumbag, then don't act like a scumbag. See how easy that is? People don't think that I'm a scumbag because I don't do scumbag shit like calling black people the N-word. Not that this guy's done that for the record. But he's a far-right extremist, so I would be surprised if he didn't say the N-word regularly in his private life, quietly, behind closed doors, because he's too much of a to say it in public. Tell us what you really think. But anyway, this guy's just acting like a victim when he's simply not. Freedom of speech is not freedom of reach. They don't get to end run around the Constitution by having social media platforms do it for them. It's my hope that the Supreme Court will side with Missouri, Louisiana, and the entire country and affirm the district court's injunction to halt this censorship. And know this, I will always fight to protect your First Amendment rights. I bet, totally. He will always fight. He's such a warrior for you, right? That's impressive, and that's also our hope. Oh, that's so impressive. Hope is that the Supreme Court stops this social media suppression. So I want. Yeah, I, I don't know what they're talking about, but I'm assuming what they're referring to is there's probably a Supreme Court case in the works right now to um, eliminate the existence of uh, what do you call it of um, uh, Section Two Thirty. I think that would be a, a complete disaster for a company to be able to be charged or sued or whatever for things that are posted on their websites. It would likely lead to complete bedlam where they will take anything off, absolutely anything. If it's something that they think that maybe they could be sued for they will remove it from their website. I think that's probably what they're talking about. But I don't know for sure.
I want to go to you uh, first, Floyd. You're familiar with this case. How can you make this? Because a lot of people in America are kind of like, what in the world's going on? They don't know that they're, they're trying to run their families and, and deal with inflation and the invasion at the border. How can you make what's happened here? They're trying to run their families, right? Run their families. Okay, go on. In this case, simple for our viewers. Okay, this is the single most important case the Supreme Court, I believe, is going to hear this entire session. And the reason it's so important is what has made America a special place has been the First Amendment, which allows us to speak our minds. You know, when you speak your mind and you're able to get everything off of your chest, then you can live in a really peaceful society. And what we have experienced really since 20. 16. I know because at Western Journal, we were the tip of the spear in this text suppression. I mean, if, if you can imagine this, uh, John, believe it or not, we were in the Facebook news feed 11 billion times in 2016, and that led to over a billion page views of our content that... Uh, okay, I don't know what he's talking about, but you know... That doesn't sound like you're being suppressed. I mean, I'm just kind of putting it out there. That sounds like you're kind of just complaining about nothing, but that's, you know, that's just me, whatever. Was experienced in 2016. After Trump got elected and you saw this massive censorship begin because really the deep state um, was shocked that Donald Trump got elected. Uh, we saw our traffic plummet by over. Yeah, I don't think the deep state was shocked by that. I think that was just a shocking event for everybody, including like Fox News, like everybody was a bright. Holy shit. Did this guy just become the nominee for the Republican Party? Oh, my God. Do we really have to get behind this guy? Okay, I guess. Shocked that Donald Trump got elected. Uh, we saw our traffic plummet by over 90%. But what's really important to understand, and, and I actually went up to Capitol Hill and I met with a lot of members of Congress and I said, you know, you've got to stop the suppression by these big tech companies. What I didn't realize at the time, because I didn't have the key information that was given to us as a result of the discovery in this case and as a result of what are called the Twitter files, because of those... Oh my God, the Twitter files didn't show anything, dude. Get on with your life. This is insane, okay? Those two peaks behind the curtain, what we found out, John, was even more shocking. And that was, yes, big tech was complicit in the suppression, but it was actually organized and directed in the halls of government agencies, not just government agencies in Washington, D.C., but literally government agencies all around the country, depending upon which of the types of issues they were suppressing us on. Uh, like, this is all just complete nonsensical garbage. Like he's making this up entirely, but OK. And so and, 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 and why this is so vital is because the, the First Amendment talks about the government yes, may not right. suppress our free speech. Right. The government cannot put you in jail for what you say about the government or the whoever. That's the thing. The Founding Fathers came from a time and place when the government was capable of putting you in jail for talking shit about the you know, the Church of England or the whoever, about the government. They didn't want that. Guess what's not happening today in America? Wouldn't you know it? The founding father, or the government is not putting, in, uh, putting people in jail for disagreeing with them. Huh, how about that? Wow. Jesus, okay. dude. 
And, and, they're, and they're doing and it upside all, down, Floyd. They're basically letting the government suppress us instead of knowing, no, the government is supposed to be constrained by the First Amendment. And the part of the problem, you know this, but most people don't. You live in this world. That's why I'm so glad that you're on the show tonight, because you live in this world. Elon Musk had a tweet. I don't know if we could pull that up here. I want to read this to people, because this is one of the other problems that happens here. He's literally like, many Americans still have no idea this happened. And so he, he quotes the FBI and the White House likely coerced social media platforms in removing post appeals court ruling. So basically, no, oh, I find this fascinating because the Twitter files, what he's referring to, that happened under Donald Trump. They keep saying the Biden campaign did this or that or whatever. It was Donald Trump. He was the president. Are you kidding? These people are so full of shit. And um, yes, it is concerning and like questionable at best that Donald Trump was trying to get things that Chrissy Teigen said about him on the twit removed. He said, we want to remove anything that Chrissy Teigen said because we don't, you know, she, he said... Or she said some really uh, negative things about Donald Trump. Chrissy Teigen, by the way, is John Legend's wife or, or whatever. Um, I think she called him like a chicken shit something something. or other. I don't even remember now. But Twitter was like, yeah, well, she did she insult him three times? Because that's the limit, technically, legally. If she insulted him three times, then it's totally justified to to, you know, ban her or whatever other thing. And um, th I think they eventually ended up r removing her because she, you know, she did, in fact, insult him a certain number of times. They found their reason. And it's just like, it's disgusting to me that they decided to censor somebody because the president asked them to. That is censorship at the president's behest. And that is straight up wrong. I can't believe that they did that. And what are they like? They're blaming it on Biden? Biden didn't do shit. What are you talking about? Biden went through the exact same process as anybody else to request a violation of the terms of service be taken down. There were dick pics of his son, Hunter Biden, that had been posted online, and the Biden campaign requested that they take those images down, requested that they take them down. By fault, like they would be following their own terms of service if they did so. But, of course, they're going to zero in on this thing or that thing. They're going to blame Biden for all this other junk and <sighs> get help, people, please get help. OK. Basically, what he's saying here is most of the people don't even understand what's going on. So, Lance, let me go to you on this issue. And how do we deal with this issue where most people, maybe they understand, yeah, it's getting suppressed. Yeah, maybe something's going on. Yeah, it's not there. But they don't understand the extent of the propaganda and that the government is involved, not just with mainstream media, but with social media, which is much more powerful in this world. Dude, I love it. So... Donald Trump literally suppressed free speech by asking the United or by asking Twitter to um, remove a tweet that he didn't like. That is literally something that Donald Trump did. And they're claiming that Biden did it instead of Donald Trump. This is insane, dude. This is absolutely nuts. The things that people are saying here. Holy Christ on a cracker. So let's go back, uh, visit the memory hole. Donald Trump gets taken off of Facebook. Donald Trump gets taken off of Twitter. Yeah, he got taken off of all of that stuff. You know why? Because he committed 
the January 6th insurrection. He was a danger. He was a public danger. That's why. And that was totally justified at the time. Everybody decided to remove Trump from whatever. That's why he created Troth Central, Central or whatever the hell he calls it. Think about that. When the leader of an opposition party you who mean gets more the, votes in any... I'm sorry. You mean the leader of an oppositional movement to the government. The leader of somebody who is trying to overthrow the U.S. government. Yes. When the leader of somebody who's trying to overthrow the U.S. government does what? Any other candidate in their party that ever ran, enough to become president, by the way, when they are deplatformed from... So oh, he was deplatformed now. He's deplatformed. Okay. So it's deplatforming to remove insurrectionists from people's, uh, you know, private companies. Okay. Interesting. Go on social media by private corporations and then you find out those private corporations are actually working not just with the government but let's be really specific with the intelligence services that's not true like none of that's true he says and then when you find out they were working with the government what he means is they were working with biden to remove dick pics of hunter biden which were a violation of their terms of service. That's not like working with the government. Biden wasn't the government at the time, A. And B, they were just following their terms of service. What are you talking about? Not just with the government, but let's be really specific, with the intelligence services. Now you find out what Chuck Schumer said was, oh, they have a hundred ways from Sunday they can get back at you. And what he meant by that is they have fingers that control not only false accusation, but they can reach the New York Times with slander articles on Trump collusion. We can plant them with FBI agents. Now we can even go to the corporations and suppress your speech. Okay, so what he's saying, um, Chuck Schumer said they have a hundred ways from Sunday to get back at you and all that junk. Completely taken out. They literally just clipped. They they clip chimped him. They just like took him out of context. That is not what he meant. That is not what he was talking about. But okay, sure, let's go with it. Fine. Who cares about clip chimping anymore? Who cares about accuracy? Who cares about telling the truth? Apparently nobody. Apparently not these people, at least. 